And we're back for the FPL portion of the cheap seats. This is where we discuss all our FPL picks. Try to figure out what Cyrus is going to try to do this week. And we try to see if Dean can catch everyone else because the rest of us are still trying to find our way into the into the at least a, a, a respectable position on a global scale right now. I think that's what the final <laughs> portion of, of, of the season is going to be. So we're going to go through the... Um, the, 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 the the picks and see how it goes. We had that blank game week before the international break, which kind of messed up everyone's squads. And so we're going to try to do that. Um, there's a, something we need to uh, note to you about. There's a blank game week in game week 33, because we're discussing game week 30. So there's a blank game week in game week 33, but Spurs play twice in game week 32 and Crystal Palace does not play. So you got to be very careful about how these weeks go. There are some fixtures that will still be added. So you might get a double yeah. or you might get something very interesting. So do watch out uh, for the fixture changes because Man City and Spurs and Aston Villa have a lot of fixtures they need to catch up on. And you might need to figure out which three Villa and City players you might need in your squad. But let's go with this, uh, the picks of the week. I'll start with myself this week. Um, so this week I went, um, interesting enough, I found a way to get rid of Thomas Suchek, which is very sad, Ooh. but I bought his teammate, Jesse Lingard. This was also part of the of me bringing in Bruno Fernandes and taking Bale out because um, after what I saw in the last game week where Bale was benched, I was like, okay, I should not play with Mourinho anymore. Um, the differential I chose this week is Adam Ola um, If Fulham are going to survive, he's going to score goals, he's going to score um, he's going to get you points. Um, and so um, I, I've got money on Fulham surviving and and, and having another year in the Premier League. Uh, so um, I, I went with Lukman. He's owned by 3.6. He's been in the... He's got a, he got five points in the last game week. So I thought maybe uh, he could be the guy because Fulham seemed to be the the team that is is on form this, this period. Um, Dean, let's look at your team. What do you think for this week? Um, and and what, what what were you what were you thinking about? Yeah. Um, so yeah, the transfer out. I had Curtis Jones in. That was just purely from uh, trying to get the KDB back in my team and free up some funds elsewhere. So it's a pretty easy swap out to get rid of him and Jota in. I'm moving towards a three-five-two formation. Um, I think that's where it's going to be um, a lot of points to get over the next ten or nine or eight game weeks. I think that's going to be. Um, so looking, hopefully Jota comes to the good there. I think he will. Um, get, like I said, he does give that Liverpool team a little bit, a little something a little bit different. So hopefully he comes to the good there. And with what we've spoken about previously, selling Salah, you still, with Jota getting exposure to a Liverpool asset at a cheaper price. So no brainer there. So, so you're banking on a, a bit of a Liverpool resurgence towards the back end, yeah. Well, is I mean, it, they is are it playing last Playing Arsenal this yeah, season. so so the question is: Is it a long term? Is it a long term signing, or is it? Just I think yeah. I mean, Jota at that price is a long term signing because you're not gonna if you know he's gonna play. So at the price he's at, you know, it's kind of a an easy an easy transfer to make in because you're not gonna get someone for as good a value. I don't think. But I think the Havertz differential is a good one for people mm. to have this week. West Brom is not obviously well. West Brom's West Brom. So <laughs> I don't think they're going to be, you know, they're not going to shoot lights out. And I think Havertz is playing really well um, of late. I think he's coming to a bit of his own playing that. Well, he was playing a bit of a false nine position previously, but kind of see what he's going to do now. But I think he's, in terms of those Chelsea assets, he's probably one of the better ones to have. Um, and then, yeah, Captain K, no doubt, Newcastle. I think half the world's probably going to captain him or Bruno. So... Mm make your pick yeah. between between one of the two. Well, that's very interesting. Obviously, I captain Bruno against Brighton, hoping that Brighton doesn't do anything uh, interesting to try to keep themselves up. Cyrus, let's look at your, let's look at your picks. Um, <laughs> They're so always you went fun, Timo. but... <laughs> yeah, so you went with Timo. Always fun. Um, you transferred out Gareth Bale. Um, you brought in Matt, your differentials, Matt Target, and your captain is Timo. Timo, is, oh, West Brom, so could possibly rediscover uh but uh what's yeah. the thinking behind all these all these moves 
So the thing for me was bail is bailing out definitely. I think also his his comment about you know really just using Spurs as his uh, training Ooh. ground as he built up. We'll, from we'll Wales, come back to that though because that's not what he fantastic said. One. Uh, look, not I what saw he what he said. Maybe <laughs> what he meant was something different, but what he said was, "Yeah, I want to build up some form, uh, some 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 fitness." So that's why I went to Spurs. Anyway, I won't quote him, but I think the thing about bail is you just. I, I, I'm not quite sure if Mourinho will carry on playing him at the level that he has been. And also, I'm not sure what Gareth Bale will see. So I thought, okay, fine. Con considering I made like five changes heading into the last game week because I thought I need to score some points. And I did fairly well because I had Captain Lingard. Um, so, you know, wasn't a, a terrible move. And I'm going to keep Lingard in my team. However, I do think that Havertz will definitely, well, he'll be a factor in the West Brom game. I do think that, uh, you know, and it's also hard to read what um, Thomas Tuchel will do, but I do think he'll probably try and and, and throw Timo Werner at, at West Brom and say, just go for it, get as many as you can, however many that might be. And this might be the game where Werner actually gets one or two goals because he's also been on the assist side of things as well. And I think that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep him in there is that I think that Werner will have a part to play in that game. Um, and and I expect that Chelsea should beat West Brom fairly convincingly. This is one of the games where they, they they've struggled for goals. This should be one that they do get some goals. Um, but mm. the other thing is I've got Matt Target in my team. Um, he's not really selected by too many people. I mean, it was like fifteen percent. I think is his his thing, which isn't mm. like massively low, but it's also not the highest. For defender, but, it's actually quite low. Yeah, and then when you they look at Fulham. it, they're playing Fulham. And he's been pretty good for for uh, for Villa going forward as well. So if Villa are going to score against Fulham, chances are he might be involved in either the build-up or he should at least get some sort of clean sheet. So I'm going against your Adam Muller Lookman uh, purchase there. Yeah, I just have a, so I've got I've got a lot of Aston Villa players. I just have a sneaky suspicion that if if Scotty Parker wants to stay up, he has to be winning a game like this. I know Villa have been yeah, great. Yeah. But He's I got kind a of kitchen sink here. Yeah. I kind of I have a suspicion that we might just get a, a stronger Fulham. Villa have 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 struggled over the past month. Um, I think they they they're now starting to the train starting to slow down. A couple of draws, a couple of losses here. There's no Grealish. So, is Grealish? And yes, he's and, coming back anytime soon. Yes, he's also know. that's the other thing. He's available while he was training, so we just not sure when he's going to be back in. So I'm assuming he might miss this game, but maybe next game he might come back in. Um, but it's just a question of, like, I, I, obviously as a differential, if, if, if Scotty Park is actually going to stay up, he needs to go. Uh, he, yeah. You need to have him there. Um, but are there any other sneaky guys that, that people need to look at if you look at the fixtures? Because um, I, I look I look here at, at, at some of the fixtures. I know Leeds is playing Sheffield. Leeds, I, I, I have one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ian yes, Nacho I. against City. Um, <laughs> that's hey, a big tart. It's almost as big as Richarlison to City. No, but, but it's actually <laughs> not. It's actually not because remember at the Etihad, what did Leicester do in the second week of the season? They gave them five. Yeah. yeah. They gave Look, them five. I, I don't expect them to do anything like that now. And But I do think that Ian Acho has been in some really rich vein of form. Um, he really is the goal scorer that that Leicester have been needing, and if any if Leicester's got any hopes of trying to stay in that sort of you know Champions League hunting space, Ian Nacho has got to be the guy that they go for. And so it's a question of how they're trying to unlock him to to get him some opportunities. So if you're looking for somebody and you said sneaky, I think Ian Nacho's he's he's a proper cheeky punt. You know, like you just think, okay, goodness, maybe him. Um, and yeah. It's tough out there for the rest of the teams. Look, look. Obviously, uh, uh, it is tough for the other teams. But I look at Everton against Crystal Palace. Mm. You know, your friend with Charleston could come good. Um, well, I'm certainly I, hoping he comes good. He's, that, he's part of my that, friend. That's three. a game. I, I've just you see weirdly these are the games Crystal uh, Everton have chucked in the past, and so mm. I tend not to really look at this and say yeah Everton will definitely beat them because the, the Everton that we've seen over the years has just been like ah oh, Crystal Palace will roll over wait what's happening and before you know it mm. Zaha Eze uh, and and um, um, a, a 
penalty from the Crystal Palace skipper Milovojevic. Uh, Milovojevic. I almost called him Mihailovic. Milovojevic <laughs> um, w- w- could decide that kind of game. I do think Everton's got a bit of an issue in the sense that you, we're just not seeing where the creativity is coming from. They haven't been able to to create many opportunities, and so I actually think that's going to be a draw, um, but potentially a score draw with uh, DCL getting one or Richarlison and then potentially Christian Benteke out of nowhere scoring for Crystal Palace. Dean, could Leeds come come out, come out on a goal-scoring goal spree against uh, Sheffield, the Rafinhas, the, the Bamfords? Could they all of a sudden get themselves back in as a sneaky either captaincy picks? Um, yeah, I definitely. Or... Uh, yeah. I hundred percent think you have to look at uh, at Leeds and maybe capitalizing on that game. So I've got three Leeds assets. I mean, I've got mm-hmm. Melier, Dallas, and Bamford. So I'm, you know, they they when Leeds turn it on, they turn it on, um, and that's uh, that's a bit of an issue because they could rock up and they could score one one or you know do nothing. Um, but you're kind of looking at that and you're hoping. I think Rafinha Rafinha is looking so good. Um, I honestly think he's going to be one of the guys that. Some of the teams are going to look at maybe trying to poach from Leeds next season or in the summer. Um, he's just playing unbelievable at the moment. So I would say, I wouldn't say if you don't have, you know, if you have Leeds players, keep them. But I wouldn't go mm-hmm. take a take a transfer to to get a Leeds player in. Um, I've got one. But oh. I've got one. Because mm-hmm. I, I have a feeling if you if you watch the last couple of Leeds games, Bamford's been absolutely beaten to the to a pulp so his legs are just looking like a chelsea loney he's sore he is sore he is proper (laughs) sore hell of a player though i've I've always liked patrick bamford i think that one to look out for is tyler roberts at leeds as well if you've been watching them play recently he's been superb he just hasn't necessarily been able to get the goals and this might be the game where he actually gets onto the score sheet one of the other names that are being one of the other names thrown around is adam triore which is a bit of a, a bit of a, 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 a Adama ah, Traore. Adama ah, Traore, Wolves? yeah. Ah, Wolves against no. West Ham. I think you're I more mean... likely to get points from Bertrand Traore than you are from Adama Traore. <laughs> yeah. No, the problem, with Adama, the problem with Adama Traore is that they've turned him to a it's... right wing back. Yeah. Um, yeah. which is not like a quite frankly. They, they basically they've Traore. tried to replace Matt Doherty with oh, Adama exactly. Traore. You can take yes. him back. Reverse. I'll give him the no. money back. So on the Tyler Roberts pick, he's 4.6. Um and 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 let's see how many people he's owned by. Um just for people. He's owned by 0.1% of, mm. of, 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 of the pre- of the fantasy. So yeah. Um Sir Jack 13 talking about Adama Torre saying a speed merchant, which is very true. Um 100%. what do they call him? Um, what is it? The buff, the buff, uh, Aaron Lennon. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, him, I enjoyed Aaron that one. Um, uh, that yeah, one. Oh. But, okay. So guys, let's close it here. Um, it is going to Easter. The, the, the deadline is on Saturday. It's not Friday night. It's on Saturday. So all those people who forgot the last two weeks ago, you've been warned. Um, so yeah, all the best. We've got fi- eight final um uh game weeks to try and figure out and say hey i made it into the top million or top five hundred thousand or top hundred uh if that's what you like dean and you're going for so mm-hmm. all the best make all the transfers that you need may the odds be in your favor enjoy the football that's the most important thing that's why we do start this podcast so we can talk about what's happening um and then we'll see you back again next week uh on the cheap seats uh, uh having fun times and discussing remember finally please uh, interact with us on these platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on YouTube. And uh, please like and subscribe on YouTube as well uh, so we can get into the algorithms. Our Twitter handles are there if you think you want to uh, not necessarily slide into our DMs, but, you know, bring some points <laughs> in. I'm um, DMing anybody. <laughs> well, yes, that's Cyrus. But I can DM if you want. Um, but, yeah, so thank you very much, everyone, uh, for, wa- for for joining us, Cyrus and Dean, and everyone who's watching and also listening on the podcast because we also have a podcast and I do all the things on the back end. But have a great weekend from myself and the guys. Les sale. Kakajiso.